All right, guys, welcome back to Iron Squid tournament here. Apparently, we're on <laughs> as Gregory oh. decides to count us down. So we are on, guys, here for our next series between Alive and Golden. Looking forward to this as I really do have a spot, soft spot for Alive's TVZ. I think it's very, very strong. Yeah, I mean, Alive does have this ability to just keep attacking no matter what. I mean, the, there's been a lot of big shifts in how the matchup has been playing out. I think the most notable one is that in the last several months, almost everyone relies on some form of Hellion Delay, oftentimes Hellion Banshee, into either double eBay or double Armory. In other words, it's heavy delay into an extreme macro game. But recently, we've been seeing players like Alive do things like uh, do some Hellion Harass into very, very quick stim and very, very quick Marine Medivac pushes. We haven't seen that in a very, very long time because players were just so thrilled at the fact that they could get a million bases up and out in macro Zergs, but Zergs <laughs> are slowly starting to figure out how to respond to that. So the older style is coming back into popularity. So let's go ahead and log into this next game, game number one, in match number four. It's going to be on Abyssal City. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good, as we do have spawning down in our, I would say, bottom right-hand side-ish. We have mm -hmm. our blue Zerg, and he goes by the name of Quantix Golden. And or yonder top left side from Team Fnatic, it is Alive, who um, has been deviating from his styles a little bit. Let's see what he brings to the table here today. Abyssal City, of course, a GSL map. These watchtowers are very interesting in formation because they watch just part of the possible attack paths. Certainly this top pod and this lower pod are the, are the absolutely critical defensive formations on this map. I mean, yeah. absolutely essential. If you're just holding, for instance, if I am a Zerg player and I'm holding the southern pod, it automatically defends this miniature base behind. And likewise, if you hold the top pod, you have a very strong ability to defend the top um, not just the top right, but actually all top three expansions. So those end up being super important. These destructible debris in the middle can be knocked down, but interestingly don't generally have that big of an impact on the center map flow. No, you're actually right with the bat. Uh, you very rarely end up seeing those rocks being taken down on this map whenever I watch it. And I mean, it's it's a good thing to point out the the, the vision that those watchtowers actually grant, because most times on most maps, say Cloud Kingdom, for example, you can't actually traverse the map by ground without actually breaching the vision of bo uh, either of the watchtowers. It's, it's yeah. literally impossible if your opponent controls both. Whereas on this map, there are potentials that you can actually get across the map very, oh, yeah. very sneakily. So that's a cool little dynamic here on Abyssal City. Yeah, you know, that was honestly kind of annoying for quite some time that, like... Every map had the trait that if you held a watchtower, then you did it. You saw everything that could possibly go down. This map yeah. is not the case. The far southern and far northern counterattack paths are very tough to deal with, especially versus a Zerg player. So Alive is going for the command center first. And, of course, if you're going to start out playing a little bit ballsy, you may as well go all out. Command center, then gas, then barracks. So Alive is literally stapling a poster to his chest that says, I'm rushing for Hellions and probably going for a fast third command center. I'm so surprised that he went for Command Center first. I was expecting him to go for a <laughs> double racks opening because that's what Alive seems to do every single time I ever watch him play against Zerg, but apparently not. <laughs> he wants to play a little bit more macro intensive, and you you know that this uh, this map's underwater, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. I every time I cast on this map, I'm like, it's underwater, schnaf schnaf, it's cool. But I yeah, of that. course, it's it's. Um... You can tell because when things explode, they float upwards. Yes. Oh, God, it's so good to watch. I don't know why it's so good to watch, but it just is. <laughs> that really took me aback the first time I saw this map, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a satisfying feeling about it. I don't know why, but oh well. So now, the, the sharks aren't space sharks anymore. They've got little bubbles around them, and they're actually underwater. So somehow, some way, the Zerg has decided that they're going to all breathe underwater. It's and impressive. Marines are going to walk on the ground, fire guns, and stutter step with zero loss of efficiency. Aw, yep. yes. It's not too very, it's not very viscous water, I guess. It's some kind of alien water. 
this point in time thing is pretty much by the book for all players. Golden Light has essentially two basic options from early expanding. Go for speed fast or go for um, the quadruple queen and the very, very fast third. So Golden Light uh, is just opting for the speed. I like this. There's actually a little timing push that you can do right with all these Zerglings. Actually, it seems slightly off. Life does like this timing push where when all these Zerglings or when all these larvae pop out, you flood lings. But they're just a smidge too late to be able to do that. But you can hit a player who rushes for a factory. Yeah, that can be a little bit scary. Um, alive here, though, <clears throat> is, is the kind of guy who's going to kind of prepare for, you know, eventualities. And, oh, well, now that I say that, he goes for a very quick third command center. So <laughs> he's just going to macro up pretty aggressively here as well, which yeah. you know, we shouldn't put past alive. He's, he does like macro sometimes. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you go command center, gas, I mean, you, command center, gas is just declaring straight up that you're just going to be going for a third command center. It's almost undeniable at that point, so, I mean, the only other thing is potentially going for something like a very, very fast um, Hellion Banshee play, but even then, players generally prefer to not do it in that order. And hey, look, what do you know? Big engineering bay aggression. At least he's consistent in wanting to go for a marine play. <laughs> yeah, and being the most greedy Terran of all time currently with one barracks and one factory's worth of production. It's funny because, you know, with those Zerglings actually swinging around to the north here uh, and trying to poke in, uh, well, I mean, it depends entirely on how our lives going to, you know, micro, so... I don't think he should be able to do too much aggression with it, but this is the kind of exploitive play from Zerks that does end up hurting a Terran that's going for the greediest play ever. So, Yeah, I will say, though, uh, Golden Light is getting the usual mixture. I'm surprised that there's no second Evo Chamber. Ah, there it yeah, is. There you go. I'm no longer surprised. So, yeah, Golden Light is now going to begin poising himself to do any potential little teensy-tiny counterattack alive going straight away for this marining play, he's going to actually need to do some pushing quickly because, I mean, you are talking a little bit about it before, that Zerg players now kind of have this magical way to play against Terran where they just get all the things. Plus one, plus one, three bases, fast layer, and infestors, and they have a lot of money for infestors. It seems impossible, but they've managed to cut a full minute, minute and a half off of the more traditional timings. Yeah, it's, it gets a little bit scary for the Terran as well at that point, because how do you end up really bridging the gap and going into a late game situation against a Zerg who has everything that they want? It's just... So Terrans in the mid game have had to be very, very aggressive and try and find the angles themselves. And he finds one of the angles here in the form of his opponent's third base, which is nicely saturated, but actually he's pulled those drones away pretty quickly and he's not spreading too badly at all. Yeah, I'm actually impressed with how few drones died here. Five drones, and at what cost? All the Hellions that swept in, there's only three more remaining on the map, and those are actually pretty critical for early pushes, because they're essentially the substitute for Combat Shield. They absorb hits, deal a little bit of extra damage, so now Alive has to wait for both Stim and Combat Shield to push, and it looks like he never even had a push plan for the longest time. And this, I actually think, is going to bite Alive in the butt. I think that Golden... Uh, who's playing under the ID Golden Light, but is actually on Team Quantic now. Golden is going to be just destroying Alive in the mid uh, and late game. I mean, the upgrades are going to start catching up. He can take a fourth right now. Actually, I think Golden should have identified that and taken the fourth right away. But yeah. it's looking quite good for him. Yeah, he's also doing a very, very good job of actually spreading the creep out in the middle of the map as well. So if he goes for this Ling Bane aggression here, he could have try and bust at the wall at the front of his opponent's base and actually try and... Uh, but it's it's not... Zergs nowadays have found the room to put on aggression, but still behind it drone up pretty efficiently as well. And it's that's the scary point to where Zergs have got in, yeah. in today's metagame. It's, it's very, very hard to deal with as a Terran, or even a Protoss. Golden positioning links at every which way. There's a macro hatch in the main. Again, really needs to throw down that fourth. Ah, this is really, this is so the problem with just having really strong build orders. It's easy to just trust your build order more than some common sense. If your opponent's stim is that late, you're still going to be defending his push with just yeah. infestors. And if you're two inches forward with infestors or two inches back, you're still just defending with infestors. So you may as well plant a fourth base down. 
Uh, there's a lot of supply depots here randomly, uh, and he kills off all the SCVs creating them. Even burrow some links during all of that to actually block off that command center. Nice move. An Very excellent nice. little play by Golden, who's playing, again, he's playing mechanically well, but strategically there's a, a big hole there. This fourth base god starting, what, a full two minutes later than it could have, comfortably. And, I mean, look at Alive in his main base, only just now adding on those barracks, only just now adding on that tank, only just now trying to get up his third base. Alive's doing all the delay tactics, or Light's doing all the delay tactics, and there, that's what I like to see. Look at that hatch going down at the fifth base. The only oh. thing that I think is missing is actually a second macro hatch, because you can go heavy Ling Infester at this point, like yeah. ridiculously heavy. Yeah, you really can. You need so much lava. It's so lava intensive in comparison to any other unit composition. And right now he's actually going to push in. Once again, no pullback for a little second. It was interesting what Alive did. He actually threw down the missile turret uh, and forgoes the scan. He had the energy for scans for the longest time to claim his third, but it's feeling comfortable to just keep him, like, I mean, he, he slowed down, right? Which is not necessarily the best position to be in. Uh, and Golden's trying to seize some kind of opportunity here with a very, very impressive army at the front. And... You know, with all those investors as well, you have to be careful. That that army of Alive is very clumped up right now. Yeah, Alive, Alive has some tough decisions that he has to make coming up ahead. For one, he has to remember to build his upgrades. That's probably the biggest one. <laughs> yep. But with this drop going on at the top, I mean, this is more annoying than it is going to do anything because, I mean, Alive sure got to whittle away a few hit points there, but he's not putting on any coupled pressure. There's another medevac moving out. Alive actually has to push along the southern pod, along the southern watchtower. Why? Because his third base is an orbital command and not a planetary. He can't comfortably push along the top side, even though there are those yes. two juicy command centers there. So he's going to have to do something that controls all the attack pads up to that side of the map. And there we see the medevac drop in the main. Pushing towards the main would benefit him greatly. Look at Golden, though. He's so prepared. Spines just decide to swing savagely at one Marine and kill it off. And <laughs> meanwhile, we have Golden just preparing for any kind of drop at the top. But Golden's um, Alive's going to go right around to the natural with that one. So, but, I mean, oh, there's two Banelings actually burrowed near the, th near the fourth command center of Alive, actually. Can you see that? Yeah, there's yeah. some really slick little burrowed Baneling plays. This is a... This is a kind of risky push from Alive, but Alive is doing a drop with the natural to try to buy himself position in this circumstance. And there, look at that money move, building the sensor tower to be able to avoid any counterattack. That's actually a brilliant place, and this is going to uh, allow Alive to push all the way towards light expansion. Yeah, he could kill this off very quickly, and indeed he does. He will actually pull back from that point on. He's on creep, doesn't want to be engaging his opponent too quickly there. As for now, he's each league dropping once again in the main. Yeah, actually, that Great Aspire is slightly exposed here. If he kills off enough Zerglings, he could start doing a little bit of damage to that. Uh, but, whoa, wait a minute. That's way too many Zerglings. Hold the phone. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the Greater Spire does wrap up. There, the Medivac gets taken down. It looks like Alive is just going for a Blitz Lightning push through the center of the map. This is going to be a tough position for Light, because now this has moved so aggressively forward that that bottom left expansion is now protected because of how defensive a uh, light has to be in. And now light doesn't even know how to defend all the different angles of attack. He needs the Broodlords up. Uh, Golden now just still trying to keep himself well rested. I mean, that's a lot of Broodlords that he has now. Six in total against no Vikings is pretty good. Zerg's actually going to push in here along with the Bane Links to try and connect. And the Marines are all pinned up against oh. the side, so they do connect. Oh dear. And now we see the top right expansion did get picked. Nice pick up there by Alive, who's in a reasonable condition himself. But, you know, I'm... I'm just wondering how Alive wants to play off this. One of the strengths of pushing along the southern path is that you get the opportunity to take a southern base. But Alive is actually trying to move more towards the middle. So he wants to mule the bottom left as fast as possible and actually mine that out. Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, going for that wouldn't be too bad, but you still I think he still has to be so careful right now of the fact that his opponent has a huge swell of Zerglings moving through the middle yeah. of the map here, as well as adding on six extra Infestors and getting Carapace for these Broodlords. He needs something to deal with them. And he's even adding on Thors to try and deal with all of this. This is this is pretty crazy. Golden Light still has those Burrow Banelings there that 
narrowly couldn't get that little pack of marine marauder at the south side. Now it looks like planetary fortress going up in center map strong. There's just zerglings everywhere burrowed as well. This is really annoying for me, even if you want to claim that base down to the south. There was a zergling that was just barely off being burrowed under that, uh, well, now a planetary fortress. So, fortunately for Quantix Golden, he's not really able to shut down as much as he would like to have alive. Mm -hmm. Kind of an odd situation for both players. Alive managed to run in, picked off two bases quickly. Golden Light is only just now recovering from that. These drops, again, ordinarily are not particularly strong, just all by themselves, but if it opens up an opportunity for Alive to push the top again, it's going to help them out a lot. Heavy defense down at the south side. A full siege tank and bunker. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is quite a lot. You don't normally expect a siege tank as well as the bunker there, but he's taking good precautions there. Alive now dropping in his opponent's main, trying to find maybe a queen kill. Will pick that one up. Oh, actually, no. Transfuses go down. As well as Banelings running in and Zerglings. Nice play there by Golden, really limiting the amount of damage his opponent can do. Yeah, I mean, Golden is just on point defending against these drops, but again, the point was not to deal damage, the point was to let this drop get in position, and see you later, Broodlords. A couple Broodlords get picked off up in the center of the map right away. There still are another five there, and with some excellent stim scanning, I mean, Alive is looking in incredible position to overrun this. He just needs to avoid those key fungals and start working away at those Broodlords, but the Baneling and Zergling numbers are quite high from Golden. They get picked down, and Alive continues to storm ahead. Oh wow, Alive has played this out so well. Even if his anti-air isn't enough, there's still quite a few Marines here that can try and close the gap with those Broodlords. They're gonna pull back for now. And he doesn't have that many Vikings left over, so he can't, and there you go, there he is. He's actually gonna try and close that gap. Tries to bring one of the Broodlords down, will get one. Does he get a third? And well, he gets second there. There are two more still very weak, but there's so many Zerglings flooding in. So back and forth Jeez. here, Golden, with the nice defense in the end. Golden wow. White, so on point, just looking fantastic in this match. I mean... That was, that was pretty crazy, that, that engagement. I was assuming, I, just just a reinforcing ton of Zerglings there from Golden was able to shut that down, and he finally gets some more Broodlords here, but those actually dying off to begin with was kind of horrible for him. I mean, Golden White does have to be careful, he is still at 2-2 two, two upgrades. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, this is one of the few times where that center open path becomes pretty significant. A minor little plod inward with a couple of marines from Alive, but you can take out the center because so often Terran must push up along the top pod or along the bottom pod, and it's a very easy way to both do a counterattack at this fourth base, or hell, even in the natural main, and still have a comfortable retreat path. I think one of the interesting things that we have going on right now for Golden is the fact that his creep spread is arcing around to the top left to the point where he's actually yeah. limiting his opponent from taking like the top left base if he wants to take that. It's not necessarily the most amazing thing to do, but if you want to put on your opponent's uh, pressure at your opponent's base as well, it's not too bad of a place to expand. And I mean, right now, both players are just maxing out once again and gearing up with pretty insane unit compositions with tons of Thor still mixed in for Alive. Yeah, Alive is not the player who likes to let up on aggression. He wants to keep making units that can move around quickly and do a lot of stuff. I mean, sure, the Viking is the ideal response to the Broodlord, but the Thor can also deal damage to other planes. Naturally, the blast on the ground is quite potent, but we're seeing Golden Light poke in with these counterattacks at the bottom side, and it's so difficult to account for every possible counterattack that can swing at the south if you're all positioned up at the north. Other drop gets shut down as well. Golden Light's doing everything he needs to do. He just needs to build up. He needs to huh, remember 3-3 three, three upgrades, and maybe even remember that Adrenal Glands is still in StarCraft 2. That's a very good point. Adrenal Glands is amazingly awesome if you're going to play this kind of style, and as is the 3-3, three, three, as for now, he will accumulate all of his units back in the middle of the map. Quantic Golden here looking to try and put some pressure on against his opponent, but there's so many Vikings out right now. The Brute Lords aren't really going to have much of a say unless the Corruptors can get good surface area on those. Looking around, we see the Alive is still doing the same play. Drop, shove up on the north side. But this attack looks a whole lot more prepared to deal with a big air army. We see only six Infestors, 16 Corruptors, and 55 Marines. That means that the Marines are actually going to be just as important against the Broodlords 
as Ooh. those Vikings will. Mm, catches a little bit of them with a the fungal there. Uh, he actually has no medevac, so every time these every time these marines are like stimming, and every time they get fungal, they're just dead instantaneously. This is yeah. not necessarily the most amazing situation for a life to be in. Oh, catches oh a god! Oh no! You do not want to lose any Vikings at this point, oh. and he does it again. Huge packs of Vikings falling, huge packs of Marines falling. One of the worst possible engagements for a live goes down. Units sweeping around from all the wrong sides. Transfuses abound, broodlings, zerglings, every, everything that could ever have ling in it is just being shoved right down live's throat. Oh, and Alive behind that tries to establish himself a base down to the south, but he can't because that one burrow zergling's been there for eons. So right now, He's adding on more Broodlords, he's adding on that plus three melee, and uh, Golden is just in such a good spot. That engagement for him went so, so well in comparison to Alive. Oh dear. Uh-oh. Oh, and the Broad Banelings. Oh my god, is he gonna get the Broad Banelings this time? Oh! 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 Well, they clipped. An actual Ooh. connection? Yeah. Alive losing this expansion, and this is the money angle for Zerg. Killing off this expansion opens up the ability to expand a to top left. That's exactly what Golden's doing in Alive, who is known so well for his strong TBZ, is on the ropes now. Yeah, he's really not been able to deal with Golden whatsoever in the mid game. All of his aggression didn't really pay out. And I mean, he kills a base, that's great, but these Crooks are going to hunt down the Medivacs. He needs to drop all those units right now. And oh, poor Medivacs go down. Zergling swing in to clean that up. And right now, Alive is looking completely completely down and out. There's so many Broodlords on the map, and he's 80 supply ahead. Quantic Golden is playing this so well, and there you go, oh, GG. GG, wow. Alive oh. just kept butting his head against the door of Golden. Uh, but geez, couldn't get through. Not even in the slightest, not even a no. dent at any point. I mean, and it's funny to think that Quantic Golden even misplayed at one point and didn't get 3-3. Three, three. And he's even still totally fine. <laughs> Even that one time where I was like, oh, he's going to get a queen with this drop, he didn't get the damn queen. It just got transfused. So, Golden showing tremendous resilience here against Alive in game number one. And going into game number two, I, Golden could be... Go, Golden, I mean, after that strong performance, could eliminate Alive here, who I did not expect to be the potential first person to be going out in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, Alive Alive has been showing a uh, somewhat unique Terran vs. Protoss style that still has a lot of success, especially even in the main stage. And then his Terran vs. Zerg is just a sort of renowned, overall well-executed uh, matchup. Then he goes up against Quantic Golden, the guy who qualified from the open bracket. And again, that's the sort of player who either wins the whole tournament or gets crushed pretty quickly. But yeah, yeah. Golden's... Really, I think, impressing me by saying, no, I'm actually just kind of even with these players. I actually just belong to be there. It's not that I was misinvited. It's that there was, there was enough good people in StarCraft 2 now that <laughs> <laughs> the invited players are beastly strong, the qualified players are beastly strong, and it's all up in the air. It all, it comes down to who plays better in the individual game. That's how it works, man. There's so many good players. Okay, guys, we shall go on to a small commercial break here. And when we are back, we shall go on to game number two between Fnatic's Ray Call Live and Quantic Golden. <laughs> 